we will solve this very useful problem <coughs> from H.C. Verma, problem 30, chapter 12. It is on simple harmonic motion. Now, in such problems where two masses are connected by a spring, it can be this arrangement, it can be a simple arrangement like this. It can be like that or like this. In such problems, we have to keep one thing in mind that if we give some initial extension to spring, some initial extension is given to the spring and then it is released, it performs a simple harmonic motion. But the center of mass, wherever it was, if this was the center of mass of the system, you give some extension and release it, the center of mass will not shift at all because there is no external force which is acting on this. So when there is no external force is zero, the center of mass will not change because the momentum, uh, it, it will not have a rate of change of momentum. There won't be any acceleration. So when there is no external force, the center of mass of a body or a system remains at the same place. So that is the most important point. Now here, the center of mass of, that is center of mass of the system, not of the each mass. Each mass, center of mass will change, but the system center of mass remains at the same place. Now for M2, let this be the center of mass for M2. And this was the location of center of mass for M1. And let this be the combined center of mass of the system. So this is the center of mass. Now this is the center of mass which will not change. Even if you give initial extension, release it, it will not change. Now let the initial extension, and let first take this as A and this as B. And we know by the property of center of mass, M2 into A would be equal to M1 into B. This is the center, M1 center is here, M2 center is here, and this is the common center of mass. So you take moment about the center of mass. So this is the property. Now suppose let me give and stretch the spring by x0. So when you stretch the spring by x0, effectively what means is that m2 shifts by a certain amount and m1 also shifts, shifts by a certain distance. Let this be x2 and this be x1. Now by again, because the center of mass will not change by property, of the center of mass m2 a plus x2 would be equal to m1 b plus x1 using this relationship we get m2 x2 is equal to m1 x1 and let which x0 be the initial extension which is equal to x1 plus x2 so this is the initial extension which we gave Part of it came here, part of it came here because if you are extending the spring and this extension is from center of mass, if you take one of them will shift x1, another will shift x2, x2, the total extension is x0. So with this relationship, we can now use what is x1, what is x2. x1 and x2 will be the amplitude of the vibration in this simple harmonic motion. Now put the value m2 x2 or you can write x2 as m1 x1 upon m2. You write x0 is equal to x1 plus m1 upon m2 x1. So you get x1 is equal to m2 x0 upon m1 plus m2 and x2 would become as m1 x0 upon m1 plus m2. Since x0 was the amplitude, the initial extension given, this gets separated and this will remain as the amplitude of the vibration of the two masses about their mean position. This was, let me repeat, this is the mean position for m2 and this was the mean position for m1. This is the center of mass. Some extension was given the mean position of m1 this is or the mean dash the new position of m1 went there and new position of m2 went there mean position of m2 went here 
it went by x2 it went by x1 so the shifting of the of the position of the m1 and m2 is divided in two parts x1 and x2 and accordingly we have found this and from this initial position which was the mean position it went further by an amount x1 so this is the amplitude i will write amplitude and this will be the amplitude amplitude from the mean position so it will come back and it will come further here so it vibrates about its mean position it vibrates about this mean position and the center of mass will remain fixed at the same place because when it comes further inside this was the extension when the compression takes place again compression is x1 here the compression is x2 and you apply the same relationship m2 a minus x2 is equal to m1 b minus x1 so m2 x2 is equal to m1 x1 same relationship you get again because this is the amplitude of vibration now this part we have found now another important part which we have to find out is the what is the uh, what is the omega for both let this be omega 2 let it be this vibrating at omega 2 and this will be this be at omega 1 now one important relationship which we have to keep in mind is that the maximum velocity that is the velocity along the mean position is equal to the maximum amplitude that is the amplitude of vibration into omega this we have to keep in mind for all simple harmonic motions the velocity at the mean position would be equal to the amplitude amplitude is the maximum separation from the mean position into omega now in this case let us first see what was the energy of the spring was half k x zero square now when you release it it get converted into the kinetic energy and when the extension is zero means when both of them came to their original position this was the initial position a and b there was extension x1 x2 was there we have calculated we have released it now they start coming so it comes with certain velocity it comes with certain velocity this is the mean position for m1 this is the mean position for m2 at the mean position let velocity be v2 here and this velocity be v1 of m1 so now you apply this relationship v1 would be equal to x1 into omega 1 and v2 would be equal to x2 into omega 2 that's a different matter finally when we find omega 1 would be equal to omega 2 now this potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy when it is at the mean position when m2 is at the mean position and m1 is at its mean position there is no potential energy at that point of time and at that position the velocity is v1 and v2 is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square another relationship which we should know is that since there is no external force the momentum is conserved so m1 v1 would be plus m2 v2 would be equal to zero that is another thing so we can write as m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2 this minus sign will come or you can write v2 as m1 upon m2 v1 into minus sign put the value of v2 here we get k x0 square is equal to m1 v1 square plus m2 m1 square plus m into divided by m2 square into v1 square you get this as m1 v1 square 1 plus m1 upon m2 is k x0 square now what is the value of v1 you write the value of v1 here m1 what is v1 is x1 square 
omega 1 square and this is m2 plus m1 upon m2. What is x1 in terms of x0? We write kx0 square is okay. Now there replace m1 omega 1 square was there and x1 is m2. Here it is x1 square so m2 square x0 square upon m1 plus m2 whole square and this is m1 plus m2 divided by m2. We solve it. This gets cancelled. This gets cancelled m2. This gets cancelled. x0 gets cancelled. So we get omega 1 is equal to k times m1 plus m2 upon m1 m2. This is omega 1. We can similarly get omega 2 and omega 2 also comes as root k m1 plus m2 upon m1 m2. So the frequency of the oscillation of both the masses m1 and m2 would be same. The only difference would be that the amplitude of vibration as we have initially found out would be different.